Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video I want to show you a tool that I've been working on to make creating platform games that little bit easier. See the problem with platform games is sometimes when I'm creating jumps I make them too difficult or too easy. It's hard to judge sometimes what's a difficult jump and what's an easy jump. So that's where I've come up with these little guys called Flint. What happens with these is when you click on them they'll spawn three different objects and it will show you what an easy jump looks like, a medium jump and a hard jump. So in this case, this is counted as a medium jump because only the yellow and red slimes have been able to make the jump. We can try it again with the other jumps. So you can see that all three jump here and actually an easy jump makes this really, really simply. So this is quite a simple jump. Anybody could make that. And then the final one here, everybody can make it, but is a little bit of a weird jump. You can see that actually the R slimes are reverse their order. If you jump too late, you only just make it. If you jump early, you go in the middle and actually jumping in the middle is the best spot to get the furthest. So this tool just gives you a really clear idea about are your jumps consistent? Are they classed as an easy, medium or hard jump? And just makes that platform design that little bit easier. So let's have a look behind the scenes. So how do we start using this tool inside of our own games? Well, the first thing you need to do is go to a new tab and open up your other project. I'm actually going to be using one of the example projects off the contract website. So I'm just going to open this one up here. Once you've opened it up, just drag the tab down and then you can use Windows right or Windows left to do a split screen mode and you can have your code on each side. Now that we've got that set up, first thing we need to do is copy over the Flint objects. So I'm going to click on Flint, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the other two objects being the sense and the trail and I'll explain a bit more what they do in just a bit. Right click and I'm just going to go down to the copy option. I'm then going to go to the object types on this side and hit paste. You could add it to a subfolder if you're on premium as well just to hide it out of the way a little bit. And there you go, Flint has been added. Now we also need to get the code working for this. So I'm just going to go to the event sheet. We've got loads of events in here already. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and then on the event sheet provided with the Flint code and I'm just going to delete the project bar and the properties bar now just so we can see this a little bit more easier. You see there's two variations of the Flint code. They both work exactly the same. However, one of them makes all the Flints jump at the start of the layout. So if you just want it to play straight away and you can just then see the arc that's been generated, then use the top one. If you want the one that I've shown you in the demo where you click on it, you will need the mouse object already added. You'll see that this one does not have the mouse object, so I'd have to go and right click and add it first. Then you can use that one. We'll use the start of layout one, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this in. So just right click, copy, right click again, and just hit paste, and that's in there. Now I also just need to undisable this one because this one's been disabled and then we're pretty much ready to go. And there's one more step that we have to do first though. So first of all, we can put Flint into our level first of all. So I'll bring him down to this first jump here and let's put another one down on this second platform. So in order to set us up properly, we need to do a couple of things. So first we're gonna resize Flint to be the same size as our player. So in this case, 32 by 32. So I'm just going to go to every single Flint and just resize them to be the same size. Next, I'm gonna make sure that the platform behaviors of the player matches the ones of Flint. Now, these are default ones you get when you put platform behavior into construct, and this is what I've left Flint to as well. However, if you've got faster speed, more jump strength, or any of these properties have changed, just make sure you click on Flint and you change the properties as well. If not, you're going to see how to do a jump with different mechanics than what you've got. Final thing, and this is really annoying that it doesn't do this automatically, is you need to set the direction. By default, it should be right. However, when you copy and paste over, it removes the default for some reason. Obviously, if you want your flint to go left, you can click on left and it will turn it around and it will jump the other direction. And then there's one final thing that we have to do is just go back to the event sheet and I've added this option called layer name. Now, by default, I've set to layer zero. However, you see there's two layers here, game and background, none of them match up. This is a feature that I didn't add in my first version of this. I've done a couple of versions. This is still not perfect. Please let me know if there's any improvements that you can suggest. But I'm just gonna change this to call it game. So all flints are now on the game layer. And fingers crossed now when we run it, we should have a working prototype. 
So if we do a test, you can see they've all jumped away and you can see the trajectory. You can also see that the uh, jumping that little bit earlier means that you land on this platform and not all the way down. So this is just, again, really useful but quick information you can get for making your platform game. So that's how you implement it into your game. How is this actually working? Let's have a deep dive at the code. So we're currently in the debug mode. This means I can pause it. I've also slowed the game down a little bit as well. So first thing I'm going to do is click and we'll pause it just there. So what we've got, we've actually spawned two more flints. We've got the yellow and the red. The other thing that we've done is we're using a second image point at different points here to create what we're calling a sensor. So we've got a green sensor, a yellow sensor and a red sensor. And these have got the platform behavior on as well. And what we're checking for is the moment that they drop even the tiniest bit in the Y direction. Now this only activates once they've landed the first time, so it doesn't matter if you've placed them slightly up in the air when you place them in your game, that's all checked for just to get rid of that annoyance. But once they're on the ground and they're moving, these sensors will be checking that the moment they drop that little bit, then start a jump. So we can see that now with the green one, the green sensor has dropped a little bit, so the green slime is ready to jump. The yellow sensor is also just about to drop, so the yellow Flint should also jump at the same time, so I'm going to quickly pause that there. And then you can see the red sensor has got that little bit of extra wait time before that drops, and then that is going to jump as well. And we can see that there. As they're moving, we're just spawning a pixel particle behind them. Now, I think my computer's running a bit slow because normally you get a much smoother line than this. You can see there's some gaps missing, but essentially I'm just spawning these sprites every single tick while they're in the air so we get this nice arc and curve and just gives us a better idea about when they start jumping what their trajectory was so have you got any objects they might hit in that arc and then more importantly where are they landing these sensors as well the moment that they drop it waits for the player to land and then these get destroyed just to reduce the lag and then finally if we run this you can see that our green one's missed so it's actually bounced off the side of the block we get a bit of indication for that through the trajectory line. The yellow one has made it, and you can see it's only just made it as well. And the red one looks like it's gonna comfortably make it. Now I've also left the slimes in place after, and this just means that we can actually see where they land after sort of deacceleration kicks in as well. Because if they're moving quite quick, they need to slow down. So that's what that's all showing. Code-wise, we've got this bit of code here, which just spawns everything. Um, it also hides away the sensors, so you don't see them actually when you're testing this. Um, I've just got rid of that just to show you the example that we've just seen. So this next bit here is just looking at every single flint, and it's just setting the sensor that matches up to the sensor ID we gave it. Um, we're just going to set it to image point one, and for every single flint, they've got a different image point. So if we go to image point one, we need to zoom out for the first one. It's just set here. So if you want to adjust these boundaries slightly, make it so the green one jumps early or later, you can. You can see for the yellow, it's slightly closer. So it's just before the edge of the player. And for flint red, actually it's really, really close. Um, I believe here is about the point where it would fall off on the platform behavior. So it's not pixel perfect, but it's not far off. And again, players aren't gonna hit pixel perfect every time, but a gap like this, from really skilled players could hit that. After that, we check, are they facing right or left? And again, that is just by clicking on your flint and then just assigning right or left if you want it to move to the left or to the right. Then we just move in that direction and mirror it if we need to. And then the moment that it's falling, that's where we call this jump. And this is using one of these new custom actions as part of the new update. If you've not seen the new update, check out my previous video on that. Um, this is a new thing that we can do where we can add a function to an object. Really, really helpful for this example to reduce the code down. And then finally, when they jump, we set the jump state from zero to one. And then when they land, we set it to two. And this is what I'm using to check. So when you first place it in the level, if it falls to begin with, it's not jumping, it's not counting as a jump, because that just be annoying. And then finally, for each flint, if they're not on the floor, and if their jump state's one, saying that they're in the air, just spawn that little bit of a trail. And we just set the animation to match the flint's animation as well. So if it's flint green, it will spawn a green particle. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully this is something that people can start using inside of their own code. Again, this is just a really, really simple tool I've been working on that aims to make just designing platform levels that little bit easier. Doesn't handle double jumps, doesn't handle abilities, but for simple jumps, 
this could be something that could be really useful just to make your games that little bit more balanced. That's all we've got time for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.